Hey folks, so I've been spending some time using the Basilisk browser as my primary web browser and in today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with it. Now those of you that have been following this channel will know that the last browser that I was trying out was the Pale Moon browser uh, and this comes from a re reasonably similar genesis. Now basically I've been looking at the viability of browsers that do not use one of the large uh, web browser engines. So if you can look at this uh, Wikipedia page here you'll notice that uh, WebKit and Blink and Gecko, those are like the three big web engines that you'll see uh, most browsers make use of these days. And uh, I just wanted to see whether or not a web engine uh, that was uh, built not by a large company or a large non-profit like Mozilla, for example, actually was, was usable and how usable uh, it would be. So I was trying out Pale Moon and that was a really good browser and I really quite liked that. But I wanted to see if that engine would be, you know, be, you know, how it would fare in other browsers. Uh, so this is uh, from a very similar, um, this comes from sort of a very similar uh, place. So it's not necessarily like a browser that has picked up the engine and done something entirely different with it. Uh, this is perhaps a browser uh, with a different uh, audience in mind and it has a few different um, in my experience with it has been somewhat a little bit different, but broadly speaking, a lot of what I have said about the Pale Moon browser can be applied to this browser here. Now, uh, off the bat, one of my biggest reservations about using another uh, web browsing engine uh, was whether or not web pages and web apps would even just sort of render consistently like they have done with uh, Firefox, with WebKit, with, um, with, with uh, the Chrome-based uh, browsers as well. And the short answer to that is yes. I have actually not had any problems whatsoever when it comes to rendering websites. Now, um, that's that's you know that is a big point in its favor. There are a few differences between this and other browsers, which I will talk a little bit about as the video goes on. But yeah, I wanted to see if the Goana engine uh, was um, was comparable to uh, to some of the others that uh, that many web browsers are built on top of. And I have to say, it is it is it's up there with the greats. I had a really smooth and pleasant time with this and. In you know, quite frequently, I almost forgot that I was using the Basilisk browser, and it almost felt like I dipped into Firefox again, because although it's not based on the aesthetic of modern Firefox browsers, it is based on the Firefox browsers from maybe a couple of years ago, uh, when they looked a little bit more like this. So it was a very comfortable uh, user interface. Uh, it's sort of similar to Pale Moon, but Pale Moon is based on the aesthetic, the Firefox aesthetic from a browser quite some time ago. Uh, and I actually quite like that one as well. But um, yeah, so Basilisk, uh, just to give it a bit of uh, an introduction here, Basilisk is a free and open source XUL based web browser featuring the well known Firefox style interface and operation. It's based on the Goana layout and rendering engine, a fork of Gecko, and builds on the unified XUL platform, XUP, which in turn is a fork of the Mozilla code base without servo or Rust. Basilisk is primarily a reference application for development of the XUL platform it builds upon and additionally a potential replacement for Firefox. So uh, that's uh, that's how it uh, how it um, sort of looks, and then it's got some features here. Basilisk is a modern full-featured web browser. It aims to retain useful technologies that its sibling Firefox has removed. Main features: full support for Java's ECMA Script 6 standard for modern web browsing. Uh, support for all NPAPI plugins like Unity, uh, Silverlight, Flash, Java, etc. Support for XUL overlay Mozilla style extensions, support for ALSA on Linux, support for WebAssembly, support for uh, advanced graphite font shaping features, support for modern web cryptography up to TLS 1.3, modern Cybers HSTS. Um, now, a lot of that is not stuff that I necessarily consciously take on board in my day to day browsing habits, but the short answer is that I've been managing to use the web almost exactly as I would with Firefox, uh, with any other browser that I would be using with little or no thought or adjustment to my browsing behavior, which is pretty good. There are, of course, fewer browser add-ons, um, but there were ones that basically covered the basic uh, requirements that I had. Um, so you've got all of these you can probably scan through and it's worth looking at basiliskbrowser.org if you're all addons.basilisk-browser.org you know links will be in the description for all of this uh i think really the only um 
uh, browser add-on that I actually made significant use of is self-destructing cookies for Pale Moon. Uh, it's just a, a way to keep the uh, the browser cache clear of unwanted cookies and that kind of thing. And it's nice and easy to add exceptions, so you're not constantly re-logging into websites time and time again as well. Uh, someone did ask in regards to Pale Moon whether or not uh, there was a password manager built into it. There is in Pale Moon, and there is in um, Basilisk here. It's very similar. It's near identical to how the Firefox built-in password manager works as well. Um, I do believe you can use it with uh, syncing. Uh, I'm not entirely certain here uh, because I haven't used the Pale Moon Sync service. So it does seem that it uses the same syncing, but you can then sync across your history, bookmarks, passwords, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I must say, I'm not entirely comfortable with having passwords uh, in an online capacity in general when it comes to uh, storing and maintaining my password database. It's something that I typically prefer to do offline just for that added layer of security. And I always feel that there are benefits in being more familiar with the technology you use um, and, and knowing its limits and its, uh, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So all in all, um, I do have to say that uh, the offline um, Password management is uh, password management is my personal preference, but I do know that many of you guys uh, would possibly trade in a little bit of security for a little bit of convenience. I'm just saying, but uh, yes, you do have that option. It would uh, appear. Uh, I have not tried it out though, so uh, bear that in mind. All things considered, there are a good number of uh, extensions and add-ons and that kind of thing. Now, in all uh, seriousness, there is a school of thought to say that you really ought not to use any browser uh, add-ons or extensions whatsoever to in order to make yourself as discreet as possible when uh, browsing and to make it more and more difficult uh, for you to be fingerprinted. Now, that's just a school of thought that I've been told from a certain number of people. Um, but of course, uh, your security provisions are entirely up to you and how you balance that with things like convenience and, and all other manner of things. Again, it's uh, it's your choice and, and, uh, and, and I would advise you, of course, to do your own research on that. I am by no means a security uh, expert and I'm far from an, uh, I'm far from an anonymous person on the internet. Internet. I mean, you know, here I am, right? So anyway, uh, when I did the Pale Moon uh, overview, uh, I had a look at some of the browser points uh, in regards to HTML5 compatibility. And I believe it scored uh, 424 uh, out of 555. And there's no browser that scores all 100, uh, 555 that I've seen. Uh, this gets 463, which is pretty good. And uh, a noteworthy um, point to uh, to 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 uh, look up here. Here we go. Connectivity, WebRTC 1.0, and it does appear to be supported. And that can be um, confirmed. I was able to use Meet Jitsi, um, you know, the Jitsi online uh, conferencing tool, uh, and that worked with my webcam and microphone and all that kind of stuff really quite easily. So. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's something that Basilisk can do that Pale Moon uh, decidedly not to implement. And I believe that was a community decision, if I'm not mistaken. And there are certainly uh, security reasons why um, WebRTC is not necessarily um, something that everyone uh, would like. But uh, yeah, uh, for those of you that are wondering, uh, Meet Jitsi, for example, which does require the use of WebRTC, um, does in fact work on Basilisk. So I think that's really uh, all I've got to say for the most part about Basilisk um, because uh, everything else can be applied to Pale Moon. Like it was a reasonably similar experience. It was fast, it was functional. Bear in mind, of course, that I do run a pretty fast PC here nowadays. So uh, it's likely that, um, that, uh, that I wouldn't really ever have necessarily a problem with the speed of a browser because whatever, um, my computer could probably handle whatever's thrown at it these days. Now, that being said, there is one um, limitation that I did come across, and it is one that uh, is part and parcel with uh, the Gowana uh, web engine and the Basilisk browser and even the Pale Moon browser as well, and that's that these browsers run in a single process. Uh, and wh uh, what that means is that, for example, in uh, Chrome, each tab is its own process, which kind of means like it's uh, each tab is its own uh, browser in and of itself that's just slotted together in an aesthetic kind of way. Uh, and Firefox does something slightly different where they um, where I don't think it's necessarily each tab has its own process, but there are several processes dedicated to the Firefox browser. 
Um, and this has a distinct advantage. Although it does, I believe, use more system resources, it also makes the browser a little bit more stable in regards to if you've got one web app or one web page which is misbehaving, on a single process browser like Basilisk, like Palemoon, um, that misbehaving web app or, uh, or web page, I mean, it's basically the same thing, uh, can affect the entirety of the browser. Whereas with something like Chrome, um, a misbehaving web app or web page will then just be confined to that single browser tab. So there was, I believe, one case throughout the week, so it's not exactly like a common occurrence, where the browser did crash on me because one website was just um, being a bit ridiculous. And, and I think it was some poor JavaScript or whatever it was. And then basically it dragged the whole browser down with it. So that is something to uh, to bear in mind there. Uh, and um, to be honest, I think it's it's something that I'm I reasonably happy to take on board given the underlying integrity of the project. And, and what I mean by that is um, the 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 team behind the Goana web engine and Basilisk and, and Pale Moon you know, I, I don't know much about the team, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they're not as well funded as the likes of Google or Firefox or Apple or, you know, and, and Adobe. And, you know, they have money in this uh, in this particular race as well. This strikes me as being a much more grassroots community level by the people for the people kind of web engine. And money can get you a lot in this world. It, hell, it can get you nearly everything. And if we want true software freedom, and if we want more autonomy over our digital lives, uh, it, it's not going to come uh, in such a comfortable way as is promised to us by the likes of Google. Google offer the world a degree of comfort for minimal cost, if not free, but it comes with deeper strings than that. It, it comes with much more complications that aren't necessarily seen on, on surface level. And if we want true software freedom, it is going to require a, deg a degree of, of uh, sacrifice or compromise or something in that regard. Like, you can get more control over your computer by installing Linux. However, Linux is not as necessarily, it's not as straightforward, it's not as idiot-proof as other operating systems, like, for example, like Windows, like Android, like iOS, right? You need to learn Linux. And Linux, uh, while it isn't, you know, while there are user-friendly Linux distributions, uh, when something goes wrong, you are you are expected to roll up your sleeves and have a look at it yourself. Yes, there is community support, but um, it's, you know, us helping each other. It's not a hand-me-down from a multinational corporation. It means that we have to sort of take on a degree of, of responsibility over ourselves and over our own digital life, and that takes work, and that takes learning new things, and that takes a degree of... Um, of of uh, of of grit, I guess, in that regard, and it's not always, you know, freedom isn't always comfortable, uh, and that applies for for software freedom. It just as much allows us freedom to make mistakes as it does uh, to to create something that we we truly couldn't get from somewhere else. So, uh, I always feel that when it comes to uh, this kind of like free and more community uh, orientated software. It, it, it isn't necessarily going to be as easy and, and straightforward and automated and, you know, sort of um, spoon fed to you in the same way that a lot of other software is. And that is sometimes a problem. And sometimes it means it's up, up to us as a community to help others along the way when we can. Because, you know, if we want to help other people gain more control over their digital lives, uh, you've kind of got to know how to assert that control yourself and the risks and rewards associated with that. So uh, I like the fact that uh, Goana, Basilisk, Pale Moon uh, are, you know, it's, it's effectively the manifestation of a community rolling up its sleeves, doing the hard work for true digital autonomy and freedom in a world that seeks to take it away from us. And that, I think, is much more valuable than some of the superficial things that uh, Google and Firefox can even offer us. Now, I get that, that, that there's a lot of asterisks by Mozilla and, and Firefox because I know that they are at least attempting to fight the good fight. But they can't do it alone. And money is a factor here in that regard. And, 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 and it, you know, it, it gets a little bit more complicated there and then because, you know, Mozilla have made 
really bad mistakes in the past as well. And heck, maybe if Basilisk were to, to take off into the mainstream, if Pale Moon were to take off into the mainstream, mistakes would most likely be made there too. But I suppose I would much rather well-intended mistakes made by well-intentioned people um, trying to do the right thing than uh, a community uh, than by you know sort of corporate manipulation like we've seen from the likes of Google before. Um, and I just kind of want to address another point that is often um, argued when it comes to trying out smaller, lesser known browsers as well. Uh, and this, I suppose, also applies to smaller, lesser known uh, browsing engines is that they don't necessarily have this huge, overwhelming security team that can, you know, tackle any bug as they arise. And, uh, and, and, um, and, and they can't hire, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of staff to actually make sure that their browser is secure in the same way that some of the larger um, corporations can do. And to that, I, I would say, I think those of us that have the ability and those of us that have the privilege of not having to watch our back 24 hours of the day, for those of us that um, privacy isn't necessarily the most important thing in the world, I would rather personally, and this is again just a personal choice, I'm not making any advocacy outside of my own here, but I'd much rather sacrifice uh, a small bit of, of privacy or, or allow, you know, put myself in a slightly more... Um, less private situation if it meant that I could then support projects and I could help use projects and I could help publicize and, and hype projects that would then develop and that they would grow and that they would become something stronger and better and more competitive. Uh, it's something that I'm personally willing to give up and I know that not everyone is and not everyone should um, but I don't live a particularly dangerous life and I don't want to necessarily fall into the I've got nothing to hide so I've got nothing to fear kind of territory because obviously that's quite uh, fallacious but it really is almost just as dangerous to trust our entire digital safety and our entire digital freedom to just Mozilla. Um, they have deals with Google anyway um, they've certainly made mistakes in the past and to put all your eggs in one basket is not a wise or prudent move anyway. Uh, I would like to see lots of different browser engines become developed and um, and I suppose it means those of us that can afford to take risks maybe ought to consider taking them so that browsers like Basilisk, browsers like Pale Moon can get off the ground. They can um, then be more suitable for people in um, uh, who who might require a degree of privacy um, in, in more severe cases than someone such as myself. So that's just my thoughts on it, is that I'd much rather take a risk and support a small community-centric project, even if it means perhaps risking a little bit of security in the process of it. I mean, I'm going to obviously still try and be careful. I'm still going to, you know, but it doesn't affect, such, for example, my use of a VPN. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, and you can also apply sensible browsing habits as well. But also, and I think we've also got to be a little bit real here, that when you're browsing the internet in any capacity whatsoever, the chances that you're doing so with any degree of anon anonymity is really unlikely, if not impossible at this stage. I think when it comes to being anonymous on the internet, in all honesty, I think the the battle's lost. If I'm completely honest, if you genuinely want a, a private life, if you genuinely want a life where there are not people snooping into it, corporations, governments, you name it, you're gonna have to turn off that in you know, you're gonna have to turn off that modem. You're gonna have to turn off that router. You're gonna have to disconnect and and maybe, you know, many of us might consider looking for offline alternatives if we genuinely want to maintain a more private life. And again, I think that goes back to Genuine freedom and genuine autonomy is going to involve people rolling up their sleeves and taking a little bit more po uh, personal responsibility. And that's not going to be easy. And not everyone can do it. But maybe it's the responsibility of those who can to lead uh, and to to help those that can't. So there we go. That's just my two cents. I think that Gowana, um shows a great deal of promise. I think Basilisk shows a great deal of promise. I think Pale Moon shows a great deal of promise. And it might not necessarily be as shiny as Chrome or as shiny as Firefox, but I think their heart's in the right place. And 
I think that it demonstrates a true sense of grit, which I really admire. So give it a shot. I'll put a link to the website. You have to download basically a binary because it's not in many uh, distribution repositories, which is a shame. So um, I really would like to see that uh, change as time goes by, because I must say, in terms of just the day to day practicality of the browser, it re like I forgot I was using it and, and sort of fell into a almost a Firefox esque assumption. Like it just felt like a very Firefox like environment for me. And, and that's a good thing. So anyway. Um, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, of course. But this is a, this is a good browser. I like it. it. It gets my seal of approval for whatever that's worth. Um, but thank you very much. Um, I want And also, I want to thank the development team behind Basilisk, behind Pale Moon, behind Goana. Um, that hard work um, and, and that knowledge and grit has not gone, on, gone unnoticed. Um, and you have my gratitude. You genuinely do, because... It's hope in a time when it feels that you need to be a multi-million dollar organization to even stand a chance. And I think this goes against that um, conventional wisdom here. And I think that's a really good thing. So thank you very much for watching. That's about it for me today. Uh, please, of course, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And I know that I do plug my Twitch uh, a lot on this channel these days, but um, yeah, we've been having a lot, a lot of fun over there talking about all kinds of things. So. If you guys do happen to be on Twitch, uh, I'm at twitch.tv forward slash Chris Ware. If you're not on Twitch, I also do mirror my Twitch streams over to uh, a, a secondary YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash gaming with werewolves. Links, of course, down in the description. And uh, yeah, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.